Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone we are going to resume our sessions on precision oncology course earlier we have discussed on the basics of the cancer biology where we touched upon a lot of many of the proto-oncogenes, many of the tumor suppressor genes, then we really went about into talking about the genetics of, of, of a normal cell and uh, so far and what it really takes for a normal cell to convert or to transform to a cancer cells. We just got introduced to the basics. So now here further moving further on, uh, this is a very very fundamental uh, uh, a background for a cancer biologist that is the ha hallmarks of cancer. This uh, we will be really going uh, through all the in-depth in details of what are exactly the hallmarks of cancer and how are these all these hallmarks of cancer are interconnected, what are the key factors playing the role in uh, in the progression of a uh, cancer to the tumor tumor for metastasis for till the cell death. Coming back, so here we really see that first uh, reduction use. So just earlier it was just uh, emphasized that or people just imagined that a cancer a cell to be only with a cancer cell. But later on over the various several years of research, so much of decades of hard words by many research groups you know, especially by uh, by Weinberg and group which I will be talking about in the future slides, uh, we, we have to envision a cancer as a very beautiful heterotypic cell uh, as a cell biologist. It is a very as I mentioned before it is a very heterogeneous, it, it is a heterogeneous population. So where, uh, where the normal cells evolve progressively to a neoplastic space, they ex they, uh, this, these normal cells acquire the hallmark characteristics and this multi cell step process of the human tumor pathogenesis can be rationalized by the need of a for the incipient cancer cells to acquire these drivers uh, traits. The reduction is used to focus only on the cancer cells and the genes within them for example this but now after so much of inputs as I mentioned and all that and several active collaborations we see cancer, uh, cancer cells along with the host uh, immune cells along with the fibroblast along with any other epithelial cells these all will really have a very wonderful uh, interactions it is just not like like you call the paracrine interactions or the autocrines you know where they really each one will facilitate the growth of the other for, for, for uh, to form a very wonderful tumor micro environment that the uh, cancer is well established. What exactly is a cancer de hallmark? What do you define precision by a precise defi uh, definition? So first of all, uh, when do you call is everything called a hallmark? Every event a cancer cell plays or plays a do we call it hallmark? Not exactly. There are only certain defined six to eight now, six number to eight number hallmarks. How do you define hallmark? It is an acquired evolutionary advantageous characteristic that complementarily promotes transformation of phenotypically normal cells into malignant ones and promote progression of malignant cells while sacrificing or exploiting the host cell. It is a very typical advantageous characteristic of the cancer cells. For example, the, the transformation process, the, there will be so much of uh, insults. For example, when I mean an insult, uh, insult is a transformation which will, uh, which will cause a normal cell to uh, go go to a uh, to transform to a uh, cancer cells. So this insult cells continuously acts on cells, leading uh, leading to transformative alterations and chromosomal arrangements and re rearrangements. But this could be because of environmental uh, exposure or replication errors or oncoviruses, which we have discussed earlier. Now after uh, this, this uh, after the normal cells slowly wherever the genetic and the epigenetic alterations or altered heterotypic interactions wherever they have occur, there is clonal selec uh, selections and along with this acquired traits, the hallmarks, the malignant, this particular, the, the tumor progression happens. This is a particular, this is how you particularly this hallmark is a very key contributing factor towards the progression of a tumor or a cancer cell. 
the hallmarks of uh, cancer were first given up by by the Hunan Douglas Hunan and Roberts Winkler. They came up in two separate uh, uh, reviews, each of them a decade later, a uh, decade apart. And they had first uh, published their influential, very influential re review. So, uh, based on the hallmarks, they are called the uh, termed hallmarks, where they attempted to identify. Uh, to organize this dense complexities of the cancer biology into six major hallmarks or six major events like such as self sufficiency in growth signals insensitivity to anti growth signals of the why if the cells evade apoptosis it's called uh, or they have limitless lim uh, limitless replicative potentials sustained they have sustained an uh, angiogenesis tissue invasion and metastasis now uh, as i mentioned it's, they thought they have given their hallmarks the six simplistic or whatever it has happened and all and they thought now th this uh, these hallmarks could be the guiding torch of a future were and they thought it is a very a reduction in a reduction manner. But however, uh, that uh, the complexity of the disease has always been growing. They have added some few more points to these hallmarks and that uh, they have come with a full circle from simplicity again back to substantial complexity. That is what uh, Weinberg in they have highlighted. As we move on, we will see what are exactly these hallmarks. This is the first report. The, what they have quoted is that we suggest that the catalog of cancer cells genotype is a manifestation of six essential alterations in cell physiology share, shared in common by perhaps all human tumors. If these hallmarks are there, they are more essentially present in all the human tumors. What are these hallmarks? Cell sufficiency in growth sense signals as I mentioned or uh, insensitivity to growth inhibitory uh, signals like your anti-growth signals what we have seen in our basically the first sessions and then uh, evasion of programmed cell de death like the uh, apoptosis and then limitless repl replicative uh, potential and this the novel capabilities acquired during tubal uh, development they represent the successful breaching of an anti-cancer defense uh, mechanism hardwired into cells and, uh, and uh, tissues. This is all the very 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 fundamental hallmarks or the first uh, chapter for all uh, cancer biologists or anybody taking up this particular course. What are this? So, this the ability to divide in the absence of growth factor stimulation. This is a very, very important hallmark. That is again your self sufficiency in growth signals. One example is which we have already seen in is your activate your HRAS and oncogene and then insensitivity to anti growth signals. This again we have already seen that is your you lose the they lose their. Uh, retinoblastoma suppressor which we have already very well uh, de in detail checked uh, worked on it in our uh, last session and then evading apoptosis we will further see down in the future slides so it is like one of this example of the mechanism is your produce IGF survival factors and then limitless replicative protection where like, like uh, we will see here that they will turn on telomerase and sustained angiogenesis you are having so many cells uh, where is the blood supply for this you have sustained uh, angiogenesis that is produce veg VEGF inducers then tissue invasion and metastasis that is inactivate e catheterin we will be working uh, we will be studying about each one of these hallmarks in this coming slides uh, uh, in this particular whole sessions now coming to this part of this so will all these events orchestrate together to form a cancer to form a tumor or what is it how does it it's it's, it's a very very beautiful uh, uh, mix of uh, permutations and combinations to see that how the how smartly the cancer cell will try to establish very well they even though this uh, each uh, cancer cells should mostly uh, try to acquire each of these uh, capacities in order to become cancerous or to, in order to become malignant they can even take different different routes to reach their final destination that is your cancer that is that uh, they may pass through six steps in an order for example your self sufficiency your step 2 then step 3 or they may go in a, in any other uh, different for example here 
so everything it may go in a different different uh, it may not be in a very perf perfect order as as claimed here the the route of the cancer may be shorter for individuals who have already inherited a germline mutation which we have already dealt with it in your last basics so suppose if there is a germline mutation in the cancer associated gene from uh, one of their uh, uh, parents so definitely this whole process will be much simple so not all cells within a tumor will require the same set of subsequent mutations so which means the tumors are of those which are present they are all genetically heterogeneous group of cells here we will be discussing the first hallmark the cell sufficiency in growth growth signals what are this we have dealt with a lot of proto oncogenes earlier we where we said that the where the normal cells the most fundamental trait for the cancer cells is, is their ability to sustain the chronic proliferation chronic proliferation so usually normal cells usually they carefully control the production and the release of uh, growth factors growth promoting signals so that there is no catastrophic the multiplication or division of cells so, and everything is very carefully correlated we saw how cdks everything play are systematically orchestrated so cancer cells by re-regulating their they these signals they try to become the masters of their own fate so, what do they do they these so they re, they proliferate regardless of the normal uh, regulatory mechanisms these uh, uh, oncogenes so they by we how a proto oncogene is converted to an oncogene it cause increased growth by increasing oncoproteins which act as growth factors and growth factor receptors and transcription factors these are all the very very prime very important terms are the very very important proteins or even if uh, we go for further down di di diagnostics we really look up for further of these markers so even as i said before normal cells require mitogenic signals to proliferate which uh, so this uh, oncogenes they encode for my mitotic sig signals they they may produce this may produce growth factor like uh, ligands which they can respond via the expression of this cognate uh, uh, receptors which are resulting in autocrine uh, or proliferating uh, stimulation so they may see uh, again this cancer cells again they will in turn uh, give send signals to the no normal cells within the sub which like the first if you recollect the first uh, di first diagram or the first figure first slide where the supporting the they send signals to the to stimulate normal cells within the supporting tumor associated stroma and these uh, stroma cells then again reciprocate by uh, supplying the cancer cells with further various growth factors on mitotic sig uh, signaling and also uh, it, this is the whole system so signaling can be deregulated by ele elevating the level of receptors so first thing your is growth factors the growth factor receptor proteins are very very important in the in uh, this particular hallmark of cancer so cancer cells can they uh, as i mentioned they uh, here this is a typical model how a ca cancer associate fibroblast will sustain in this but in that particular environment they they are composed of a mixture or this cf a mixture of fibroblast which have different origins when activated these cells interact with the cancer cells and start uh, expressing several mitogenic and and pro and pro invasive factors that create a, which creates a favorable milieu for tumor cells to proliferate and invaded into the surrounding so you have the endothelial you have the epithelial sites then you have everything you know so the proliferation they, the whole thing is to proliferate and invade it into the surrounding tissue they all this will act in a paracrine manner bringing to their cognate uh, binding which all of them they will bind to their cognate in their respective respector resulting in the bidirectional or multidirectional communication so that their ability to sustain the uh, proliferative signaling is increased now coming to growth factors so growth factors can act on specific cell surface receptors that subsequently transmit their growth signals to other intracellular components eventually resulting in altered gene expression so here the general process of transmitting an external sig uh, molecular signaling to the cell to evoke a cellular response is called 
signal transcription please bear in mind this particular term which is very very important term for the all the hallmarks of uh, cancer so only the signal transcription only so like how you have your signals you know the radio wave signals or anything so beautifully all the cells even in the presence of a, a cancer or in an uh, in, in a normal scenario there there is a, a very nice transmission of molecular signaling from a cell how does it happen this is uh, this by, uh, happens via the the receptor the growth factor receptor bindings this they bind it's usually enzyme linked receptor the lichens so several driver cellular responses which includes your proliferation differentiation growth survival angiogens they all happen via this growth factor receptor uh, they that signaling happens they can signal to mu multiple cell types to be more specific so here the example is given where you know you have the uh, plated derived growth factor this is a simple uh, experiment which we do in our uh, cell culture most of you would have done it where uh, you just grow the cells in a molar layer and you give a scratch with a tip and uh, as it as you can see you know the one is a growth a grow platelet derived growth factor receptor positive cell line and here it's a negative cell line where because and once after you give a scratch and then you add your growth factor uh, platelet derived growth factor to to the growth medium you see that you know this then the wound heals that is that is there is migration of this particular cells towards each other there is affinity whereas in the absence in the cell line where there is no receptor you know there is the uh, the cells don't migrate or the fibroblasts the mutant fibroblasts have been they are not responsive to the addition of your particular growth factor here which clearly shows the importance of the growth factor receptor in this particular experiment what is the function of growth factors so uh, first thing uh, the growth factors are uh, are very very important as i said in the different like you know that you should advise it in a normal scenario tissue re repair and regeneration by initiating the stem cell proliferation and differentiation they also promote uh, locomotion contralty the differentiation and angiogenesis and oh, and altered growth factor receptor can function as your oncoprotein please keep in mind a very very important term we introduced here is oncoprotein this is the first very wonderful example which we are going to start off now is your epidermal uh, growth factor and your epidermal growth factor receptor this is a very very important molecule and in fact it's your first factor first uh, identified growth factor receptor here this basically is uh, it is a family the egfr what you famous uh, it's called Uh, the epidermal growth factor it is it belongs to the rtk family which consists of four members that is your egfr your erb1 your uh, erb2 which is your her uh, her2 and your erb3 which is your her3 and erb4 they are structurally related uh, receptors and they are single chain transmembrane uh, glycoproteins which consists of an extracellular ligand binding ectodermain uh, between the receptors this receptor dimerization is very very essential for the activation of the intracellular uh, tyrosine kinase domain and phosphorylation of the c terminal tail this is a very very important uh, uh, receptor and which is very uh, for uh, very vital for many of the cell fun functionalities we will here be talking of a very our one of our uh, favorite one more oncogene which we have already discussed in detail which will not be going into detail ras here somatic uh, mutations again here activate additional downstream pathways so that yeah, this uh, like this constitution fire uh, firing with here we will see how somatic mutations activate additional downstream pathways like uh, we've discussed in detail the keras proto oncogene where you know uh, we uh, emphasize that you know a sustained po uh, point mutation is in the uh, 12th uh, 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 codon which results in keras proteins that are constitutively active in downstream signaling there there is no uh, off mechanism so on and off if you recollect 
this info uh, uh, this particular the involvement of the mutant ras oncogenes varies dramatically so in from one tumor type to another next with uh, where we discussed that the the pdac now in the pancreatic adenocarcinomas more most more than 90% of the tumors carry keras mutant alleles uh, keras normally cycles between the active uh, gtp bound and an inactive gdp as we have uh, discussed before and the uh, activity of the GDP exchange factors and GTPS activities proteins that is your gaps. This is a very uh, they play all this play a role for to ensure a proper physiological uh, signal uh, transcription downstream of uh, growth factors receptors. So, first thing the mutants uh, they uh, lose the ability they lose to bind gaps and hence they are uh, logged in an, an active state mediating potent which will uh, which will really have lot of potent oncogenic effects. So, defects in this negative feedback uh, mechanisms so are capable of enhancing proliferative signaling. This the prototype of this type of regulation involves the RAS uh, oncoprotein itself. This is how the expression of the negative feedback that attenuated the proliferation signaling RAS mutations and auto it disrupts an auto regulatory negative feedback and mechanism without which RAS transmits chronic proliferative signals. Coming to the second hallmark that is insensitivity to anti growth signalings or evading growth suppressors. So, here we will not be uh, talking very much because we have already covered all this, but uh, what I would like to emphasize uh, here is that the dozens of tumor suppressors they operate in various ways to limit uh, cell proliferation and they have been discovered through their inactivation in one form of an animal or, or any in human cancers. They we, which we called as their tumor suppressor genes. And then we discussed about how this particular tumor suppressors act through the uh, gain or a loss of uh, functions. The four, two most important uh, are your uh, retinoblastoma blaster, associated proteins and the TP53 where, which are very important to, to uh, as they operate as a central code nodes with two complementary key complementary secretory circuits. They govern the decisions of the cells to proliferate or uh, to activate uh, grow, to proliferate or to arrest growth or to go for a senescence or to go for a cell uh, suicide program. Mutation uh, mechanisms of contact inhibitions and his uh, evasion are also uh, part of this particular uh, hallmark. So, in addition to the hallmark capability of acquiring growth uh, stimulatory signal in cancer cells, they also uh, have to circumvent powerful signaling programs that normally operate to suppress per cell proliferation. As mentioned, tumor suppressor proteins are the great keepers and care, uh, caretakers of the cell. So, you have like how your stop go signals and or uh, die. So, all this has been covered very well in the first basics of the cancer chapter. So, moving on what are senescence? What is senescence? Senescence cells are cell cycle arrested cells, but they are highly bioactive cell type. They are, have excessively elevated signaling by oncoproteins such as your RAS, MEC, the RAF and they can provoke counteracting responses from cells such as the induction of cell death. Usually cancer cells expressing high levels of these oncoproteins are uh, in some cases forced to enter into the non-proliferative but viable state and this is we call it as senescence and these cells have uh, morphological features uh, such as enlarged cytoplasm, the absence of proliferation markers and the expression of uh, senescence induced beta galactidase enzyme. Uh, we can uh, uh, here clearly see that you have so, so much of excessive pro proliferating signaling which can trigger cell senescence. Ro the role of uh, the senescence in ca there is this role of this uh, senescence and therapy has been extra uh, has been exploited during cancer therapy which we will discuss and these normal cells you know if they are uh, accumulating uh, oncogenic alterations you know um, they they trigger an initial phase of aberrant cell proliferation which gives rise to preneoplastic lesions 
uh, again further down uh, parallel to this aberrant proliferation cell intrinsic uh, uh, fail safe mechanisms they will be failing. So, oncogenic induced senescence or o OIS we call it it happens and uh, apoptosis is also activated. So, further on additional alterations will happen this will be further on this uh, the whole uh, cancer cells will be uh, will progress towards tumor and conventional treatments such as the chemo radiotherapies and all they uh, act by inducing cell death or sen cell uh, senescence termed therapy induced uh, TIS senescence. So, currently pro senescence therapies are be, uh, being explored as, uh, as alternatives or complement to cancer cells. So, one very very important fa factor or the molecule which we will be talking now is TGF beta or the transforming growth factor pathway which promotes malignancy. Uh, the, the TGF beta is best known for its anti proliferative effects on epithelial cells. This uh, TGF beta is a secreted cytokine which uh, intricately controls a or many physiological and pathological process. Uh, for process during development and carcinogenesis. It exerts anti proliferative effects and functions as a tumor suppressor during early stages of tumorogenesis, whereas at later stages it functions as a tumor promoter, aiding in metastatic progression through an autocrine TGF beta loop. In normal cells exposure to TGF beta blocks the progression through the G1 phase of the cell cycle. In many late stage tumors, TGF beta signaling is redirected away from suppressing cell pro proliferation. It activates a cellular program term the which is very very important your EMT transition that is epithelial to uh, mesenchymal transition. We move on to another hallmark of uh, cancer that is how does it? Uh, resist cell death. So, one very very important uh, uh, hallmark which we are going to move or further see now is evading apoptosis. What is apoptosis which is a very wonderful term in cancer biology. It is also known as program cell death or suicide program is it is uh, activated where uh, and uh, uh, within the cell and it leads to fragmentation of DNA, shrinkage of cytoplasm, membrane changes and cell death without lysis or damaging to the neighboring cells. It is a it is a normal phenomena which usually occurs in most of the multicellular organisms. So, coming to her here the cell death here is of the by many types the necrosis where irreversible cell uh, uh, death uh, cell uh, death due to pathological responses uh, and it is called uh, necrosis. It is an uncontrolled cell death and that results in swelling of cell orga organelles, plasma membrane ruptures and eventually lysis of the cell and, say, uh, and spillage of this intracellular contents into the surrounding tissue leading to tissue cap damage. Unlike uh, the program cell death known as apoptosis you know uh, this uh, which usually uh, happens with uh, from intrinsic signals uh, here the it is they are both types here here uh, necro uh, the intr intrinsic type and the eccentric type of apoptosis and uh, but the necrosis due to occurs uh, mostly with uh, signals which are from outside the cell which uh, which is these signals are mostly associated with uh, uh, inflammatory response due to the release of heat shock proteins, uric acid or DNA uh, which cause um, inflammation activation and secretion of your uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, IL-1 beta. But the cancer cell death is usually it involves two, two broad types your apoptosis and the uh, program cell death and their necrosis. The non-apoptosis type the autophagy, nec uh, necroptosis and uh, apoptosis like uh, uh, program cell death which is caspase independent it is also uh, it also happens. So, caspase is uh, they are synthesizers uh, as active uh, uh, inactive precursors or prokaspases which are usually activated by cleavages uh, aspartic acids by other caspases. So, each seaside protease is made of so here we will clearly see um, the intrinsic and the uh, slowly the uh, uh, extensive type of 
apoptosis mechanisms. So, this is a very beautiful diagram which illustrates how uh, the procaspase activation happens. So, each suicide protease is made up of an inactive proenzyme, procaspase here which is usually activated by the proteolytic cleavage by another member of the caspase family. So, two of the cleaved uh, fragments uh, associate to form the active site of the uh, caspase. The active caspase here is thought to be a tetramer for one of the units. So, each activated caspase molecule can clear cleave many such pro pro caspases thereby activating them and these can uh, again further down further activate more pro, pro caspase molecules. In this way initial activation of a small number of pro caspase molecules which are called initiated caspase can lead by an amplifying chain mechanism uh, to a cascade leading to a to an explosive activation of large number of procaspase molecules. Here how you can see how one molecule of an active, mole, uh, active uh, caspase molecule will lead to a caspase cascade. Some of these activated uh, caspases is called effector cas cas caspases then cleave uh, this finally they cleave the key key proteins in the cell including specific cytosolic proteins, nuclear laminins which further leads to the control death of the cell. So, activation that what we saw earlier was the intrinsic pathway. The coming back here, what is it about the extrinsic pathway? This is the so this is the extrinsic or the death receptor pathway, whatever we call it. It is based on the receptor and the intrinsic intrinsic or the mitochondrial pathway. So, here we will be talking a little bit in detail about your uh, cell extrinsic pathway that is how the activation of apoptosis happens. This is mostly uh, the receptor uh, ligand uh, based and uh, the, the so this involves the interaction of the cell surface uh, receptors with their ligands. They initiate ap the extrinsic signaling pathways that initiate uh, uh, the apoptosis they usually mostly involve the transmembrane uh, receptor mediated interactions. They involve your death uh, receptors that are members of the tumor necrosis factor that is your TNF uh, gene family or uh, with the uh, like your FAS cell or the FAS R and in this uh, model there is clustering of uh, receptors and binding with the homologous uh, uh, trimeric ligand. Here we can see that is a trimeric ligand where the FAS cell and the FAS, uh, the FAS R they bind. Upon ligand binding the, cyto the cytoplasmic adapter proteins are recruited which exhibit uh, uh, here they you can see the recruitment here which exhibit corresponding uh, death domains that bind with this particular receptors. Okay, so, the binding of this FAS, uh, FAS ligand to FAS receptor results in the uh, uh, binding of the adapter protein FAD uh, and the binding of the TNF uh, TNF uh, ligand to the TNF re receptor or uh, results in the binding of your here which we do, did not see is your tra TRAD with recruitment of your FAD and RIP. Then FAD really associates with your procaspase B via dimerization of the death effector protein. So, at this point the death inducing signaling uh, complex that is your disc that is this death inducing signaling complex is formed resulting in the autocatalytic uh, uh, activation of your procaspase 8. This will activate again and we further know how uh, the, the how the cell uh, apoptotic the target cells is killed here. Here you have your disc formation which activates your uh, caspase cascade and eventually which targets the target cell. The coming back again to our uh, intrinsic pathway. This usually involves sensing of internal stress levels which are compatible with as apoptosis that is that is uh, here there should be a shift in balance uh, which favors pro-apoptosis over anti-apoptosis. So, a pro-apoptotic event has to happen here for this particular interest for the activation of uh, 
uh, apoptosis from cells uh, inside the cells which is your intrinsic pathway. So, uh, one such event is um, uh, the mitochondrial outer membrane uh, or MOMP permeabilization which, which rela with the release of activating molecules from the uh, intermembrane spaces. So, both the um, pathways converge here on activation of your caspase as we saw in the previous slide in the intrinsic pathways and in the uh, uh, extrinsic pathways. They converge on the activation there of caspases uh, cleavage proteins uh, which will uh, uh, which will definitely complete the task of cell, cell death within a very short time. So, so apoptotic cells uh, exhibit uh, several biological uh, mod modifications, biochemical modifications. There is protein uh, cleavage, protein uh, cross-linking, DNA breakdown, and phagocytic uh, recognition. Now, this is a very, very one more important family of proteins which we have to discuss here is your BCLT2 family proteins, which are the main intracellular regulators. So, in the intrinsic pathway, there is the point of no return. What we have said before recollect, it is defined by the um, MOMP that is a mitochondrial outer membrane uh, permeability which relates to the release of cytochrome C. Particularly determines whether the cell is committed to, uh, commits to apoptosis and hence has crucial roles in uh, this particular BCL2 has a role in development tissue homeostasis and immunity. So, the, so, the identification of cytochrome C uh, as an apopto, uh, apoptogenic factor released from the mitochondria, it, it, this was been a breakthrough in uncovering the uh, impulse. So, first thing the very important organ here is mitochondria for uh, identification of that it plays this mitochondria plays a very key role for uh, in the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. So, BCL2 along with its close relatives of its family or BC, um, LA, XL, BCL, W, MCL1, they are all inhibitors of your apoptosis, which will acting in a large part by binding to and thereby suppressing two uh, pro apoptotic triggering proteins your BAX and your BAK. The, this, these two are your BAX and the BAK, they are embedded in the mitochondrial outer membrane. When, uh, so your pro-apoptotic, uh, pro-apoptotic effector proteins, your BAX, BAC and the BK, so B, uh, B, they disturb the integrity of the outer, uh, their, uh, they, so the BCL2 along with this cro close relatives, you know, like your uh, BCL2 like proteins, the uh, BCLW, MCL1, they are inhibitor of apoptosis. They act in large part by binding to and thereby suppressing two apopto pro apoptotic triggering proteins here, BAX and your BAC. They are embedded, which are embedded in the mitochondrial outer membrane. Uh, when uh, when uh, relieved of inhibition of uh, by their anti apoptotic relatives, BAX and BAC disturb the integrity of this mitochondrial membrane, causing the release uh, into the cytosol of pro apoptotic signaling molecules, the most important of which is your cytochrome C. When the no normally sequestered, which is inside, is released, it activates a cascade of cytosolic caspase proteases that proceed to further. Uh, fragment multiple cellular structures thereby executing the apoptotic uh, death program. Now, we will be talk talking of another uh, uh, another mechanism autophagy, where autophagy how it mediates tumor cell survival and death. Autophagy will be active under conditions of uh, uh, nu nutrient depletion, deprivation where uh, for the it, it is like it removes damaged and potential harmful uh, organelles thereby supporting survival uh, surviving cell survival so prolonged over activation of this photo autophagosomal or lysosomal pathways can lead to autophagic cell death or acd which is a type 2 cell death the, this usually autophagy tends to serve as a recycling process of uh, intracellular components so, that physiologically serve a quality control function. 
and it um, removes pathologically uh, removes pathologically long lived or misfold proteins and damaged organelles. Here we will see how autophagy mediates tumor cell survival and death. Usually autophagy is a multi step process which involves several uh, ATG proteins and signaling complexes. It requires the formation of a double membrane autophagosome. Uh, so, uh, that is that sequestered proteins, lipids, organelles and invasive micros microsomes and fuses with the lysosome to form the what is called an uh, uh, for uh, uh, autophagosome and this uh, fu fusion of this fu fusion uh, of will, uh, will lead for digestion of content by the acidic hydrolysis. hydrolysis. ULK1 protein uh, is uh, uh, serves as a central initiator of autophagy and it is inhibited by your mTOR C1 complex that contains the mTOR. Uh, uh, so, AM, uh, AMPK serves as a negative regulator of mTOR C1. So, the uh, autophagosome biosynthesis, biogenesis it starts with the formation of an initiation of a membrane that is derived either from the endoplasmic reticulum or uh, from uh, other cell membrane sources. Vesicular uh, nuclease, uh, nucleation is promoted by your uh, BECN1, BP, uh, your BP3 core complex containing the, the lipid kinase. Vesicular uh, elongation basically is regulated by your ubiquitin like conjugate uh, systems that cooperate to co uh, catalyze the the that cooperate to catalyze the conjugation of phosphatidyl ethanyl amine. So, following all this vesicular closure and everything, mature autophagosis fuse with the lysosomes to uh, generate auto, uh, auto lysosomes that digest the autophagosomal content by lysosomal proteases for cellular recycling. So, now slowly we will shift gaze to a very very important molecule which is telomerase. So, telomerase is a ribonucleoprotein which is responsible for maintaining a telomere. What are telomeres? Ends of chromosomes consist of several thousand repeats of uh, 6 base pair sequences. Uh, so, um, after each cell cycle 500 to uh, 50 to 100 uh, base pairs are lost. Uh, so, uh, usually progressive shortening due to inabilities of DNAP is to completely replicate during S phase happens. So, for progressive variations causes them to, uh, for, to lose their ability to protect ends of your chromosome DNA. So, uh, unprotected chromosomal ends participate in uh, end to end fusions leading into cell death. The very very first important milestone the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 2009 was uh, awarded to Blackburn and uh, uh, Blackburn, Greater and Black Jack for their discovery of the telomerase. When they identified it plays a key role in the formation or progression of, uh, uh, of up to 90 percent of the malignancies this tel telomerase uh, is playing a role. So, it is a very very important ribonucleate pro protein. What happens if there is a delayed activation of telomerase they will be it will be a uh, they will be a limit uh, it, this will limit and it will foster foster neoplastic uh, neoplastic progression so there will be uh, neoplastic progression in uh, this is uh, it's almost telomerase is almost uh, absent in non immortalized human cell line but is expressed as a functional sibling uh, functional uh, protein or significant levels in great majority of the immortalized cell lines including all your cancer cells. So, it is as it presents at a very high level. By extending telomeric DNA, telomerase is able to counter the progressive telomere erosion that would otherwise uh, that would uh, in case if the TNA telomerase is absent. So, the, D, uh, the DNA is not protected. So, the telomere ero erosion would happen. So, the presence of the telomere activity either in 
spontaneously immortalized cells or in the presence of cells intended to express the enzyme is correlated with the resistance to, uh, related to uh, resistance to induction to both senescence and crisis or apoptosis. So, we here now we have here clearly discussed about the three different uh, hallmarks here very interesting hallmarks where how uh, cancer cells sustain proliferative segments, how they avoid the growth suppressors and how they resisted uh, cell lip. So, we have just got introduced into the basics of the hallmarks by with this particular. So, we, we went into uh, in, in depth of uh, how the uh, cancer cells how they sustain proliferative uh, signaling and then how they resist uh, cell death like all the different autophagy or telomerase then we learned about apoptosis all that. So, now uh, in our next session we will see uh, what is uh, we will further learn about the different other uh, hallmarks of cancer and then we will also see how the different inhibitors see why is it important to study about the hallmarks of inhibitors it is mostly in your diagnostics and in the therapeutic potentials. Now, if I have this particular for example, your EGFR inhibitors the we have really seen how this uh, EGFR plays a very very important role in in the cell proliferation uh, and in the tumor progression. So, supposing if I have inhibitors, so again you have mutations happening here. So, for example, your lung adenocarcinoma. So, if you have a mutation in this particular EGFR4 and then in a wild type, which this is a very, very interesting. You have tyrosine kinase inhibitors which target your EGFR. Uh, in uh, EGFR. This is how uh, the whole hallmarks are very uh, hallmarks of cancer are very relevant in the clinical scenario. So, in the next session we will discuss about the remaining hallmarks and then we will continue to see how all this particular inhibitors are playing an important role and what is the stage in the particular uh, in each, what is the stay what is the role in each of their particular uh, cancer that is in particular cancer scenario. Thank you.